Welcome to the Professional Book Nerds Podcast presented by Overdrive. This is Joe. Welcome back. Before we dive in, remember to rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you do your listening. And we'd love it if you could rate and review the podcast. If you want to follow us on social media, we post all sorts of fun things like episode reminders, if we're taking a little break, or showing off what we've gotten in our book mail recently. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at ProBookNerds. Have a question or want to chat with us, you can send an email to professionalbooknerds at overdrive.com. With that, let's get into today's episode. I have Emma with me, and we wanted to do something a little spooky. Since we are now in spooky season, I thought it would be a good time to recommend some haunted house reads. Emma, hello. I'm so excited to talk about haunted houses. Me and reads too. Yes, I mean, read. <laughs> and reads with haunted, haunted houses. <laughs> haunted houses reads. But speaking of that, Emma, do you get into a haunted house moment? Sometimes. Okay. But I honestly can turn any setting into like an anxiety panic station. So like, I don't <laughs> really need to go in a haunted house to freak myself out and get like all worked up. But I do appreciate like a haunted, like horror nights kind of a moment. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> you're probably more along the lines of like the universal house of horror, like the, like a theme park where there's like yeah. scare actors walking around versus. Yes. Versus like haunted houses. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly am more inclined to like a fall festival, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm more like a Johnny Appleseed fest. Yeah. But. I will take some creepy gothic settings to a degree. <laughs> totally, totally like creepy vibes if you were visiting an old house, like a Stan Hewitt, like a Cleveland History Center. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Like a Stan Hewitt is perfect. I was there this weekend. I love the idea of a haunted house, but I have the most like obnoxious startle reflex <laughs> like truly if you jumped at your zoom screen right now i would jump so maybe not the right setting for you either <laughs> no I, I i also have like a really reactive fight or flight response yes i have been to one haunted house in my life and i every time something scared me like if an if a scare person jumped out at me I would go, oh, you got me. I become the most Midwestern you've ever heard. And I was just laughing the whole time. They would scare me. I'd start laughing and go, oh, good job. Like I would compliment them on their work. Mm -hmm. So it's probably not for me. No. Uh, and re-managing my anxiety, I, I don't really want to put myself through that right now. But one of my my best friends just went to, she described it as like, a town in the middle of nowhere where it's like hokey pokey and it's their own property with like making their own rules. She's like, we signed a bunch of waivers and they could like get up in your face. And she had a grand old time, but I'm just like, mm. I, I don't mm. want to start accidentally swinging. <laughs> right. What happens if you punch someone in the face? Cause they jump right. out at you and that's their whole, the whole purpose. Right. But like, I love a horror movie. <laughs> I love a spooky locale. Uh, in college, I worked weddings in a museum. So I'd be shutting things down at like one in the morning and we'd have to nope. go shut off lights in old buildings that it is my belief were haunted. Like, no, no, mm -hmm, no. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope. I will read about it. <laughs> nope. So, with that in mind, should we dive into some picks? Yeah. Let's share our picks. My first one is a little older. It's from 2014. Uh, the style is a little different as well. It's a lyrical book about a house that keeps women captive. Um, and one of our main characters, Miranda, has pica. If you don't know what that is, it's the urge to eat things that aren't food. Uh, TikTok has shown me Grey's Anatomy clips about people with pica, because who doesn't need Grey's Anatomy tip uh, clips in, in their feed? So just going to kind of start off with that, like, 
this isn't for everyone because the chapters are kind of stilted and it's got a strange flow. Sometimes it can be hard to tell who's narrating, but I think y'all know by now that I love a weird, challenging book every once in a while. Um, and it definitely plays into making it upsetting. So this is White is for Witching by Helen Oyemi. There's something strange about the Silver family house in the closed-off town of Dover, England. Grand and cavernous with hidden passages and buried secrets, it's been home to four generations of silver women. Anna, Jennifer, Lily, and now Miranda, who has lived in the house with her twin brother Elliot ever since their father converted it into a bed and breakfast. The silver women have always had a strong connection, a pull over one another that reaches across time and space, and when Lily, Miranda's mother, passed away suddenly while on a trip abroad, Miranda begins suffering strange ailments. An eating disorder starves her. She begins hearing voices. When she brings a friend home, Dover's hostility toward outsiders physically manifests within the four walls of the Silver House, and the lives of everyone inside are irrevocably changed. At once, an unforgettable mystery and a meditation on race, nationality, and family legacies, White is for Witching is a boldly original, terrifying, and elegant novel by a prodigious talent. Um, it's the winner of the Somerset Maugham Award and one of Granta's Best Young British Novelists Awards as well um, from the acclaimed author of What Is Not Yours Is Not Ours, Gingerbread and Pieces. So that is White Is For Witching by Helen Oyemi. This cover is so creepy too. The cover is really creepy. The description like, huh? <laughs> and so definitely like, of course, War, trigger content warnings there as far as eating disorders and and just a reminder i know we both kind of said the anxiety piece but can be unsettling to read spooky books <laughs> yeah and so that in mind for sure especially like i know you said like we're both prone to anxiety while we read these books and sometimes that can heighten our anxiety so yeah sometimes these books there's a time and a place and sometimes right they can just <laughs> make your anxiety worse or sometimes that's what you're looking for. Yes. Sometimes it's the good anxiety where you're like creeped out. The others, if you find yourself getting like actually unsettled, we talked about it with some of our uh, more recent episodes. Um, that's a good time to pause. <laughs> Touch exactly. grass. <laughs> exactly. And do something different. My pick is creepy and gothic and newer. Although I do think y'all will like that we've got sort of a variety of release dates here because some of the older classics are absolutely perfect for haunted house reads. So my first book is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. You've probably seen this book all out and about because it's the October Reese's Book Club pick. My one gripe with that is that they did print it with the Reese's Book Club sticker on it in the first printing, and you can't remove the sticker. That's my least favorite, the fake stickers. The fake sticker. So I, that is my gripe, my only gripe about Support this that. book. <laughs> so get it in ebook, get it in Libby, because then you don't have to deal with the sticker. But this is a described as a gorgeous modern gothic fantasy. So I kind of like that this is a little more on the fantastical side. It's not straight up horror, which y'all know if you've listened to this is something that I'm newer to as a reader. So Opal is a lot of things. She's an orphan, a high school dropout, a full-time cynic, and a part-time cashier. But above all, she's determined to find a better life for her younger brother, Jasper. Do love the name. One, one that gets them out of Eden, Kentucky, a town remarkable for only two things, Bad Luck and E. Starling, the reclusive 19th century author of The Underland, who disappeared over a hundred years ago. All she left behind were dark rumors and her home. Everyone agrees that it's best to ignore the uncanny mansion and its misanthropic heir, Arthur. Almost everyone, anyway. Opal has been obsessed with the Underland since she was a child. When she gets the chance to step inside Starling House and make some extra cash for her brother's escape fund, she can't resist. But sinister forces are digging deeper into the buried secrets of Starling House, and Arthur's own nightmares have become far too real. As Eden itself seems to be drowning in its own ghosts, Opal realizes that she might finally have found a reason to stick around. Welcome to Starling House, enter if you dare. 
So yeah, that sounds creepy and perfect. And the cover is lush and beautiful. And that is Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. That came out October 3rd. So it is a relatively new release. You made two points when you started that I love the most that like with horror dates don't matter as much. I think yeah. there's also like a really interesting rereadability with horror. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of in my own personal, like I think of the same thing with horror films that I can rewatch them over some other films. I'm like, I only really needed to see that once. Um, I think horror reads have a really interesting thing that you can kind of make that like, this is my creepy October playlist almost. Yes, I agree. Get you in that spirit. Right. I I love that. I love that you can pick from a whole realm of dates that I'm going to hit us with a 2023 release as well, but we're also both kind of jumping all over the time frame. And I love your other point of it can truly, it like haunted house books break genres in a really interesting way that it can be like, in theory, we could have pulled a house with the clock in its walls. And like, you know, there's a lot of ways that you can genre bend haunted houses and i think that makes for really exciting reads too my next pick is from march of 2023 by t kingfisher this is a house with good bones it's a haunting southern gothic we love a gothic we love a southern gothic from an award-winning master of suspense a house with good bones explores the dark twisted roots lurking just beneath the veneer of a perfect home and family Mom seems off. Her brother's words echo in Sam Montgomery's ear as she turns onto the quiet North Carolina street where their mother lives alone. She brushes the thought away as she climbs the front steps. Sam's excited for this rare extended visit and looking forward to nights with just the two of them, drinking boxed wine, watching murder mystery shows, and guessing who the killer is long before the characters figure it out. But stepping inside, she quickly realizes home isn't what it used to be. Gone is the warm, cluttered charm her mom is known for. Now the walls are painted a sterile white. Her mom jumps at the smallest noises and looks over her shoulder even when she's the only person in the room. And when Sam steps out back to clear her head, she finds a jar of teeth hidden beneath the magazine-worthy rose bushes, and vultures are circling the garden from above. To find out what's got her mother so frightened in her own home, Sam will go digging for the truth. But some secrets are better left buried. So that is A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher. That one, like I said, was out March 2023. And the Southern Gothic is always a keyword that I find appealing. Always. My next pick is from podcast pal and favorite Riley Sager. We cannot do a Haunted House episode and not mention Home Before Dark. By Riley Sager. This came out in 2020, I want to say, and is his haunted house story with some classic Riley twists. So 25 years ago, Maggie Holt and her parents moved into Bainberry Hall, a rambling Victorian estate in the Vermont woods. Three weeks later, they fled in the dead of night, an ordeal her father recounted in a memoir called House of Horrors. His story of supernatural happenings and malevolent spirits became a worldwide phenomenon, rivaling the Amityville horror in popularity and skepticism. Maggie was too young to remember any of the horrific events that supposedly took place, and as an adult, she doesn't believe a word of her father's claims. Ghosts, after all, don't exist. When she inherits Bainberry Hall after his death and returns to renovate the place and sell it, oh gosh, her homecoming is anything but warm. The locals aren't thrilled that their small town has been made infamous, and human characters with starring roles in House of Horrors are waiting in the shadows. Even more unnerving is Bainberry Hall itself, a place where unsettling whispers of the past lurk around every corner. And as Maggie starts to experience strange occurrences ripped from the pages of her father's book, the truth she uncovers about the house's dark history will challenge everything she believes. Dun, dun, dun. So, yeah, Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. I mean, everyone knows we love Riley here, but... I really enjoyed that book. It's a good, twisty, turny Riley piece, as always. 
Okay, so here is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. This one came out in 2015, so another older one for you. But of course, New York Times bestseller, Gillian Flynn's Edgar Award-winning homage to the classic ghost story published for the first time as a standalone. A canny young woman is struggling to survive by perpetrating various levels of mostly harmless fraud. On a rainy April morning, she is reading auras at Spiritual Palms when Susan Burke walks in. A keen observer of human behavior, our unnamed narrator immediately diagnoses beautiful, rich Susan as an unhappy woman eager to give her lovely life a drama injection. However, when the psychic visits the eerie Victorian home that has been the source of Susan's terror and grief, she realizes she may not have to pretend to believe in ghosts anymore. Miles, Susan's teenage stepson, doesn't help matters with his disturbing manner and grisly imagination. The three are soon locked in a chilling battle to discover where the evil truly lurks and what, if anything, can be done to escape it. The grown-up, which originally appeared as What Do You Do in George R. R. Martin's Rogues Anthology, proves once again that Gillian Flynn is one of the world's most original and skilled voices in fiction. So a short story read for y'all, but truly that to me gives very much haunted house vibes. Like I just think of short stories about creepy happenings and I love that kind of trope of a fake psychic being like turned into a believer. So that is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. Yeah, I remember when this came out and this was I mean, honestly, it's just exciting to have anything from Gillian Flynn. So a ghost story. Yes, please. My next pick is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. This is an older pick. This came out in 2009, and I believe they made it into a movie as well. Uh, So one post-war summer in his home of rural Warwickshire, sheesh. Dr. Faraday, the son of a maid who has built a life of quiet respectability as a country physician, is called to a patient at Lonely Hundreds Hall, home to the heirs family for over two centuries. The Georgian house, once impressive and handsome, is now in decline. Its masonry crumbling, its gardens choked with weeds, the clock in its stable yard permanently fixed at 20 to 9. Its owners, mother, son, and daughter, are struggling to keep pace with the changing society as well as with conflicts of their own. But are the heiresses haunted by something more sinister than a dying way of life? Little does Dr. Faraday know how closely and how terrifyingly their story is about to become intimately entwined with his. Dun, dun, dun. Sarah Waters is a master of her craft, so... Yes, uh, any opportunity to read a story from her. Yes, especially if it's a haunted house one. So that is The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. And you can book to screen Parrot with the 2018 film, you were right, turned into a movie, uh, Donald Gleason. Oh yeah, I love him. So this pick is an October 3rd, 2023 release from you, Nisbo, and this is The Night House. So, of course, from international best-selling author, a chilling fresh spin on the classic horror novel, When the Voices Call, Don't Answer. In the night house, the horror begins immediately, and it only keeps calling from there. That's from Josh Mallerman, the New York Times best-selling author of Bird Box and Spin a Black Yarn. Let's dive into this description. In the wake of his parents' tragic deaths in a house fire, 14-year-old Richard Eleved has been sent to live with his aunt and uncle in the remote insular town of Ballantyne. Richard quickly earns a reputation as an outcast, and when a classmate named Tom goes missing, everyone suspects the new, angry boy is responsible for his disappearance. No one believes him when he says the telephone booth out by the edge of the woods sucked Tom into the receiver like something out of a horror movie. No one, that is, except Karen, a beguiling fellow outsider who encourages Richard to pursue clues the police refuse to investigate. He traces the number that Tom prank called from a phone booth to an abandoned house in the Mirror Forest. There, he catches a glimpse of a terrifying face in the window, and then the voices begin to whisper in his ear. She's going to burn. The girl you love is going to burn. There's nothing you can do about it. When another classmate disappears, Richard must find a way to prove his innocence and preserve his sanity, as he grapples with the dark magic that is possessing Ballantyne and pursuing his destruction. Then again, 
Richard may not be the most reliable narrator of his own story. So this is a quick read. There's a time jump from age 14 to age 29. It's very twisty, less than 250 pages. Um, so it's a, I know it's a kind of a touch of a stretch on a haunted house, but there is a haunted house in there. Like it's also got that like camp that I love so much and just strange, mysterious horror. So great one to pick up if you're looking for something a little different. This is The Night House by Yu Nesbo. And uh, that came out just this past October. This looks so good. And I like though, this is, we're providing a variety of like haunted house stories. So if yes. like straight up horror isn't your thing, we have like gothic fantasy, we have like short story. There's a little something for everybody, I think. Right. That This one definitely to me is like giving the general kind of Buffy the Vampire Slayer version of horror, like the touch of camp with the drama. So my next pick is Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. This came out July of 2022. I want to say that this was one of Jill's picks for one of our monthly episodes, maybe? I'm pretty sure it was. This cover immediately, like, jogged something in my memory. Yeah, I feel like she was the one who told me about this first. So this immediately came to my mind. I mean, the cover is literally like a blood red house that's dripping and also floating in the air it's really creepy and that millennial pink background i do love that come home vera's mother called and vera obeyed in spite of their long estrangement in spite of the memories she's come back to the home of a serial killer back to face the love she had for her father and the bodies he buried there beneath the house he built for his family coming home is hard enough for vera and to make things worse she and her mother aren't alone a parasitic artist has moved into the guest house out back and is slowly stripping Vera's childhood for spare parts. He insists that he isn't the one leaving notes around the house in her father's handwriting, but who else could it possibly be? There are secrets yet undiscovered in the foundations of the notorious Crowder house. Vera must face them and find out for herself just how deep the rot goes Ooh, creepy creepy so this is just like home by sarah gailey oh i yeah that really has to bump up my tbr because i love that kind of like mysterious lodger potentially causing trouble or the person that you have to be immediately suspicious of mm. yeah exactly and again like literally toss the word gothic into your description and it immediately is a book that piques my interest but also for fans of the haunting of hill house the netflix adaptation and again like true crime masterpieces even like i'll be gone in the dark this feels very of those vibes so yep and again like the cover is so gripping uh -huh. they get me good with that kind of cover a good cover and i'm a sucker for millennial pink <laughs> <laughs> so i'm throwing it back to 2018 not too far back i know but it still feels like forever at this point this is from simone st james loved talking with simone for the book of cold cases this is the broken girls thought this would be a fun pick a little bit different as the haunted house is a boarding school but still technically a haunted house so a journalist uncovers the dark secrets of an abandoned boarding school in this chilling suspense novel from New York Times bestselling author of The Sundown Motel. Vermont, 1950. There's a place for the girls whom no one wants, the troublemakers, the illegitimate, the ones too smart for their own good. It's called Idlewild Hall, and local legend says the boarding school is haunted. Four roommates bond over their whispered fears, their friendship blossoming, until one of them mysteriously disappears. Vermont 2014. 20 years ago, journalist Fiona Sheridan's elder sister's body was found in the overgrown fields near the ruins of Idlewild Hall. And although her sister's boyfriend was tried and convicted of the murder, Fiona can't stop revisiting the events, unable to shake the feeling that something was never right about the case. When Fiona discovers that Idlewild Hall is being restored by an anonymous benefactor, she decides to write a story about it. But a shocking discovery during renovations links the loss of her sister to secrets that were meant to stay hidden in the past and a voice that won't be silenced. So that is The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. 
If you want more of a crime read, more of a mystery kind of take on a haunted house, there's a pick for you right there. My next pick takes it all the way back to 1839. <laughs> so, we're going to, but it's, oh, it's a classic for a reason. The Fall of the House of Usher. This is a short story by Edgar Allan Poe. This is perfect Halloween haunted house, October creepy vibes. And I'm sorry if you have not read any Edgar Allan Poe. He's a classic for a reason. Uh, definitely do that. And in great time. Because I just realized that as we are recording this, the and this episode will be out uh, shortly thereafter, that the Netflix adaptation of The Fall of the House of Usher uh, comes out soon. So if you would like to read the short story before you watch the series, I think only the first episode comes out. I don't know if they're doing that thing where they stack, you know, it's week to week. Uh, so definitely get caught up if you want to know the original story. So the fall of the House of Usher begins with an unnamed narrator arriving at the house of his friend, Roderick Usher, having received a letter from him in a distant part of the country, complaining of an illness and asking for his help. Uh, although Poe wrote the short story before the invention of modern psychological science, Roderick's condition can be described according to its terminology. It includes a form of sensory overload known as hyperesthesia. So hypersensitivity to textures, lights, sounds, smells, and tastes, and hypochondria, so the excessive preoccupation or worry of having a serious illness, and acute anxiety. Uh, it is also revealed that Roderick's twin sister is ill and falls into trances. And so this unnamed narrator is sort of trying to figure out what is happening with Roderick, with Madeline at their estate, this house of Usher, as things just sort of literally crumble around them and all of these creepy and terrible things happen. So if you're interested in the sort of golden era of horror writing, you want something that is gothic and creepy and a pretty short read, I would definitely check out The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. I love Edgar Allan Poe. I absolutely adore his poems. I love his short stories. I, I can't get enough. I'm super excited. I did not know that there was a series coming for this. My next pick is another recent one. This one actually came out October 3rd, 2023 as well. This is Let Him In by William Friend. A lot of good keywords here, gothic, grief, single dad after a tragedy, imaginary friend who may be more than imaginary, uh, like Babadook vibes for real. So let's just, let's just dive in. Daddy, there's a man in our room. Alfie wakes one night to find his twin daughters at the foot of his bed, claiming there's a shadowy figure in their bedroom. When no such thing can be found, he assumes the girls had a nightmare. He isn't surprised that they're troubled. Grief has made its home at Heart House. Nine months ago, the twins' mother, Pippa, died unexpectedly, leaving Alfie to raise them alone. And now, when the girls mention a new imaginary friend, it seems like a harmless coping mechanism. But the situation quickly develops into something more insidious. The girls set an extra place for him at the table, they whisper to him, they say he's going to take them away. Alfie calls upon Julia, Pippa's sister, and a psychiatrist to oust the malignant tenant from their lives. But as Alfie himself is haunted by visions and someone watches him at night, he begins to question the true character of the force that has poisoned his daughter's minds with dark and violent consequences. Whatever this friend is, he doesn't want to leave. Alfie will have to confront his own shameful secrets, the dark past of Hart House, and even the bounds of reality, or risk taking part in an unspeakable tragedy. So it's a horror debut perfect for readers of Katrona's Word, The Last House on Needle Street and The Spite House by Johnny Compton. It's an emotional, hair-raising story that will grip you from the first page and won't let you go. So that is Let Him In by William Friend. It's got a really creepy cover. It looks really, really creepy. That's what I was just going to say. This cover is scaring me. The cover is ooky spooky, but if you look past it, you'll see that those are just three trees and a fence. It's just a yard. Oh, <laughs> no. And I'm so, the, this does 
just this whole concept does really freak me out as well. Yes. Yeah. There is something very unsettling about the imaginary friend. And it's creepy enough when there's like a kid seeing something, but to make them twins on top of that. Ugh. Yeah. And just like sort of like, what is it? Is it an in- like the intruder aspect? Like the. Is it home invade? Is it supernatural or is it real? Like, right. Yeah. And like neither, like no to either of those. But None is good. But no, creepy, creepy. This will definitely it'll keep you freak up at night. you out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My next pick is similarly scary. So this is again an older title, Charnel House by Graham Masterton. This is from 2016. It was an Edgar Award finalist. And it's about a demon-possessed house out to uh, devour the world. So, you know, just uh, a little small thing. A desperate and terrified old man appears at the office of John Hyatt at the San Francisco Department of Sanitation with a chilling complaint. His house, Seymour Willis insists, is breathing. Hyatt suspects a rat infestation, which is not better in my opinion, but the truth is worse much worse. An ancient demon out of the darkest Native American folklore lives within the walls and floorboards of Willis's home. An all-power malevolent being determined to break free and wreak havoc on the city by the bay. Soon, a tiny cadre of believers in the impossible, including Hyatt, Willis, and a Native American shaman, hold the fate of all humanity in their hands. The monster's hunger for blood and flesh is insatiable, and it is determined to escape its prison and become whole. Once it does, the entire world will be its feeding ground. A haunted house story like no other, a gory and terrifying tale of demonic possession, this award-winning supernatural thriller by the acclaimed author of The Manitou provides substantial chills on every page. Ugh, uh, it promises to haunt your dreams long after you've turned the final page, so... Uh. Maybe not for me right now, but obviously this book is appealing. So creepy. Definitely a haunted house. Definitely a haunted house. So that was Charnel House by Graham Masterton. I don't know which of those is the worst option. I know. I mean, probably demons, but a rat infestation sounds horrible. Okay, y'all, here we go. Listed with a subtitle as A Story of Terror, this is The Handyman Method by Nick Cutter. Another recent release, I I really tried to balance out some of my older picks with some new, 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 new ones. This came out in August of 2023. A chilling domestic story of terror for fans of Black Mirror and the Amityville Horror. When a young family moves into an unfinished development community, Cracks begin to emerge in both their new residence and their lives as a mysterious online DIY instructor delivers dark, subliminal suggestions about how to handle any problem around the house. The trials of home improvement, destructive insecurities, and haunted house horror all collide in this thrilling story perfect for fans of Nick Cutter's bestsellers The Troop and The Deep. Quick description, but I love this blend of online DIY community, classic haunted house horror tropes, dark subliminal suggestions, insecurities. This is The Handyman Method by Nick Cutter. My final pick is super creepy, if I do say so myself. This cover is really freaking me out. (laughs) It is Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. This came out in the fall of 2021. So this was all the things Bram Stoker, Shirley Jackson, British Fantasy and World Fantasy Award finalist, Indie Next Pick and so on. So it's, are you ready? Uh, So a high-end era mansion stands abandoned, its foundations resting on the bones of a bride and its walls packed with the remains of the girls sacrificed to keep her company. That's not creepy at all. It's the perfect venue for a group of thrill-seeking friends brought back together to celebrate a wedding. A night of food, drinks, and games quickly spirals into a nightmare as secrets get dragged out and relationships are tested. But the house has secrets too. 
Lurking in the shadows is the ghost bride with a black smile and a hungry heart. Ooh, and if the cover is any indication, that would be horrifying to see on many levels. (laughs) She gets lonely down there in the dirt, effortlessly turning the classic haunted house story on its head. Nothing but blackened teeth is a sharp and devastating exploration of grief the parasitic nature of relationships, and the consequences of our actions. So I did choose this because it is a creepy haunted house tale that is steeped in a lot of Japanese folklore with a good amount of twists. So while the horror elements are scaring me for sure, (laughs) this uh, certainly looks like it will be a thrill ride nonstop. And I love that it has the Japanese folklore in there. So that is Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Ka. I love that. Uh, When you started the description, it immediately made me think of like the ring and the grudge, Yep, this kind of Japanese staple when you think of horror. Horror. Ooh, yeah. And that, yeah, like the the just like the idea hair of like, over the face, the uh-huh. idea, ooh, all of that, just really creepy. So this oh. certainly, certainly looks like it fit fit the bill of horror haunted houses. Well, I can't wait! I can't wait to pick that up. That's that's going on the list. <laughs> Um, I did want to throw a little bonus title out for everyone. It's not often that I get to grab like a juvenile or a middle grade title, but this caught my eye, piqued my interest immediately. It looks super cute. Came out in July of 2017. This is Spirit Hunters by Ellen O. Praise from Publishers Weekly. It's got a starred review, a book list star review as well, and then some other praise from School Library Journal. Uh, But this is from We Need Diverse Books founder Ellen O. She returns with Spirit Hunters, a high-stakes middle-grade mystery series about Harper Rain, the new seventh grader in town who must face down the dangerous ghosts haunting her younger brother. It's a riveting ghost story and captivating adventure. This tale will have you guessing at every turn. Harper doesn't trust her new home from the moment she steps inside, and the rumors are that the Rain family's new house is haunted. Harper isn't sure she believes those rumors until her younger brother, Michael, starts acting strangely. The whole atmosphere gives Harper a sense of deja vu, but she can't remember why. She knows that the memory she's blocking will help make sense of her brother's behavior and the strange and threatening sensations she feels in this house, but will she be able to put the pieces together in time? So once again, that is Spirit Hunters by Ellen O, an adorable middle grade series. You can get into it with all of the other titles, but a fun little cap for our Haunted House episode. So Emma, thank you for sharing some Haunted House picks with me today. This is a super fun way to get ready for Halloween. Always. It was really fun to look for something that, I mean, we know I'm new to horror. This is probably tiring to keep saying it, but it was interesting to see like the breadth and depth of the picks, even with sort of just one common theme of haunted houses, all the different ways that you can have that be present in the books. So that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to see you how exactly we fit the fit the brief and hit the vibe. Well, listeners, thank you so much for joining us today. Remember, you can check out all of these titles in Libby from your library. And as always, happy reading. Readers can sample and borrow the titles mentioned in today's episode on Overdrive.com or in Libby. Our library friends can purchase these titles in Marketplace. Professional Book Nerds is proud to be an Evergreen Podcast signature program. To learn about other Evergreen Podcasts, visit evergreenpodcasts.com. Our podcast is produced, recorded, and edited by Emma Dwyer and Joe Skelly and presented by Overdrive. To learn more, visit professionalbooknerds.com. 